Okay, so here we've got a cylindrical drum and we've got a ramp with rest at equilibrium, but the minute we see the words uniform rod, our brain is going, okay, it's a moment's question. It looks strange, but it's a moment's question. And we can take it from there. So first of all, we've got the weight W. We know it's uniform, so it's acting in the center. So we've got W there. It's on a rough horizontal ground. We've got our reaction force. We're gonna have our friction over here. So we've got friction here. We've got any other forces. We've got it sitting here and it's a circle. So the normal is going to be like that. And I think for the moment, that is all we have. Now, remember with moments, we're going to have up equals down, left equals right. And we take moments at A. But in this case, it's a little bit different because it's given us a question first. It says, explain why the reaction from the drum at the point C acts in a direction which is perpendicular to the ramp and calculate the length from A. Okay, so we know that ACD equals 90 degrees because AB is a tangent to the circle. And by Pythagoras, because we know the other two sides, so either you recognize it as a 5, 12, 13 triangle, or you can say the square root of five squared plus 12 squared is gonna give you 13 meters. And now we're gonna go through the process of resolving what we have there. Right, so we've got a diagram. Let me quickly put our forces back on. We had R, we had friction, we had weight. We had the normal, and that's the only thing that's not going up and down. So we want to resolve this like this. That is theta, that is also theta. So we're going to have n sine theta, n cos theta. And now we're going to go through our process. Up equals down, left equals right, and moments at A. So whenever you see a moments question, that's the process that you're going to go through. Okay, so up equals down. Going upwards, I have R and I have N cos theta and that equals W going downwards. I've got N sine theta equals friction. I'm gonna take moments at A, so I'm starting at A. Remember a moment is the force times the perpendicular distance, so this distance here. So we've got W, this is this side of it. So this is gonna be cos. So we've got W times eight, because it was uniform and the whole thing is 16. Eight cos theta equals, we get to our next force, which is N, which is already perpendicular. So we just take 12 to be the distance. So 12 N. And we know that cos theta, because remember we've worked this out is 13, cos theta is going to be adjacent, so this one here, over hypotenuse. So W times 8 times 12 over 13 equals 12N. And we can rearrange that and we've got N equals, so essentially that goes, 8 over 13W. So we've effectively answered part B. Right, so then in part C, we want to find an expression for the resultant force at A. So essentially that means I want the force R and FR, and then I want to resolve it because the resultant is the result of the two forces. Okay, so what we're going to do is take all this information we have and substitute things in. So we want an expression for R. So R is going to equal W minus N cos theta, but we know N is 8 over 13 W, and we know that cos theta is 12 over 13. So we got 1 W minus 8 over 13 times 12 over 13, which gives us 73 W over 169. And then we want an expression for friction, which is N, which is 8 over 13 W, times sine theta, which is 5 over 13, 
and that's because sine opposite over hypotenuse. And that gives us 40W over 169. So we've now got our two values. So we've got, let's go to the next page. So we've got friction, which is acting in that direction, which is 40W and 169. And over 169, actually let's draw that further down so you can see properly. So we've got friction acting in that direction and we've got our R acting in that direction. Now nothing ever does this, right? So we can think of, we can sort of shift, if you like. This line over here kind of can get shifted along here. Although it's taking everything with it. So when I'm considering how to think of the resultant, I'm thinking across, I could think across and up, for example. So we've got 40W over 169, and we've got 73W over 169, and we want to find the result. So we want this one here. So we can do that using Pythagoras, and that's going to be our force at A. So we're going to do the square root of... 40 over 169, and that's going to be W squared, um, and that's going to be square that, and 73 over 169, W squared. When I stick that into my calculator, I get root 41 over 3, over 13, W. And then it asks me for the angle, so it wants me to calculate this angle here. So theta is going to be 73w, so tan theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So 73w over 169, time, um, it turns into a times, but let's write it out first, divided by 40w over 169. Now, a divide becomes a times, and you flip the fraction. So that's going to cancel, that's going to cancel. So we get tan theta equals 73 over 40. We're going to do inverse tan and theta equals 61 degrees.